man up. It's game time. Everybody stand up. Hello, everyone. This is Justin Rodriguez. I'm here with the Varsity 845 Section 9 Boys Basketball Tournament Preview. This could be the most exciting time of the year for high school sports. And of course, J-Rod has an exciting show for you. We're going to drop three features on you. I have one from Burke Catholic, home of the defending Class B state champions. We also checked in with Marlboro, perhaps the hottest team in Section 9 right now. We finish our features in Newburgh, which of course is a Class AA contender every year. I will also offer my Section 9 championship predictions. You know you can't wait for that. We start off the show at the Eagle's Nest to play a game called Who Knows Zach Roofer Best. Of course, Zach Roofer is Burke's star guard, the reigning Varsity 845 Player of the Year. He will play at Division I Lafayette next year. Here's how the game goes. We ask Roofer six questions about himself. Then we see who knows him best. Teammates David Pullman or Billy Garneau. A three-pointer, that's three points, will be awarded for correct answers. Additional points can be added or subtracted at my discretion. Here we go. Favorite basketball player? Uh, Jimmy Fredette. Uh, Jimmy Fredette. Uh, definitely Jimmy Fredette. David and Billy hit nothing but net on that one. It's three all. If you could take any girl on a date. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll just get out She's really pretty. Uh, probably his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Likes um, Kim Kardashian, Jessica Alba. He's a fan of those two girls. Garneau goes up 6 3 with the Alba answer and throws in Kim Kardashian for good measure. We all know that Kardashian and basketball players don't work out. Or maybe it's just athletes in general. Anyway, I wonder what Zach's girlfriend Ariel thinks about his Alba answer. I'm kidding, of course. Best personality trait. Uh, I think I'm pretty nice and humble about a lot of things. Well, I think about basketball, he's probably really humble. He doesn't like to brag a lot about his, like his D1 scholarship and how he played and stuff. He just lets other people talk about it and he just kind of takes it and doesn't really, like, gloat about it. Okay. Pretty outgoing. Nice kid. I mean. Pullman ties it up. Six apiece. What are you going to major in at Lafayette? Uh, economics. Or probably something with business. Um, business, accounting, something like that. Business is close enough to economics. We'll give David and Billy two points apiece to make it eight all. Favorite food? Uh, favorite food has to be pizza. Probably pizza because every, uh, every time for a game we go out to get pizza. His favorite snack's popcorn, but he's definitely a pizza fan. Billy the Kid shows off and even drops some knowledge on Zach's favorite snack and his favorite food. A rare four-point play. Make it 12-11 Garneau. What annoys Zach Roofer? What are things that annoy you? When people steal my food. Usually when he doesn't hit his shots, he gets really frustrated during practice and stuff. He doesn't hit him, but uh, that's an easy one. Uh, he hates when people touch his stuff and like take his stuff, like food. Uh... Garneau wins 15-11 and is near perfect. Thanks for playing and good luck in the postseason, guys. For our next feature, we catch up with Streaking Marlboro. A week ago, hardly anyone was talking about Marlboro winning the Class A championship. Well, they are now. The Iron Dukes have won 10 in a row and captured their first Mid-Hudson Athletic League title with wins over Red Hook and Pine Plains last week. Red Hook is the two-time defending Class A champion. Yes, Marlboro, a five-win team last year, is for real. You want to know more about the Iron Dukes? Here are five things you should know about Marlboro, brought to you by headliners on the team, Alex Smith, Ryan Carey, Austin Beck, and Mike and Matt Tambori. It's all you guys. Take it away. One ritual we like to do as a team, I mean, obviously we want to be serious before a game, but uh, when it gets a little relaxed, so we don't have like, pre -game, that many pre-game jitters, we like to tell little jokes on the bus and stuff. We actually have a player that uh, is designated to telling jokes and follow them. Some are bad, but every once in a while he gets a good one. Student section, uh, during all our home games, they get crazy yelling, cheering, and it gets really loud in here, pumps us up. Uh, everyone, during the day, we're all talking about it during school, what we're going to do, cheers. So it definitely pumps us up and gets us going. Last year, or this year, we came in with the uh, mentality of last year we had a five-win season. So this year, we came in with uh, to set goals to make sure we had a better and productive season. And uh, I think we accomplished that and uh, proved it to a lot. Uh, this year, I think it was very important because uh, 
the AU season was very important to this season because we were able to work together and we have our chemistry going and we're just carrying on and we keep going. Um, it means a lot to us because, I mean, usually, I mean, when we first started, we didn't have that many people in the stands, and now as it fills up, it helps us and makes us feel like a home team, even when we're at uh, college court. Thanks for the info, guys, and good luck in the tournament. For our final feature, I hit Newberg to talk about a lost art, a player taking the offensive charge. Sure, it's not as glamorous as a slam dunk or a big three-pointer, but every coach appreciates a player sacrificing his body and taking a charge. It's one of the little things that, dare I say, don't show up in the box scores, but they do help decide games. Here's Newburgh coach Matt Brown talking about the importance of taking an offensive charge. Oh, it means everything. It sets the tone for your defense, sets the tone for the game. It's uh, one of those little things that go unnoticed, but we take a lot of pride in that. It's something we work on every single day, and it's something we, we really stress to these kids. Like many other teams, Newburgh runs a charge drill in practice. Check it out. <laughs> now it's time for Brown to demonstrate the art of taking a charge with Newburgh forward Antoine Polk. For the record, Brown was a key role player with the Goldbacks in the late 90s. He wasn't afraid to take a charge. Now what you, what you want to do is, as the ball is coming in, you want to take a step up. Step up, come into it, chest out, either hands out or hands down, doesn't matter. Okay, and then you want to sell it, you want to square up, and then sell it as you fall down. Step up, sell it, fall down. Good. Good stuff, coach, and nice job, Antoine. Now it's time for your favorite sec segment it's prediction time. Before we start, here's a disclaimer if I pick against you, Pack your bags. You are likely headed to Glens Falls. If I pick you, well, you are probably cooked. Actually, my basketball picks have been much better than my football picks this fall, so you might be okay. Let's do this. In double A, I'm going to take Newburgh over Kingston in a two or three point game. I think Newburgh has the best two players on the floor in Gerard Skurlock and Jonte Ruddy by a slight margin over Kingston point guard Justin Robinson and inside man Javon Coffey. I also like the way Jason McAllister is developing for Newburgh inside, and Donovan Fields, the super sophomore, is playing well. But keep in mind, Kingston still has very good scoring depth and better perimeter shooting than Newburgh. So it's going to be a good game, and I'll tell you this, it is definitely going to be a classic. Class A is tough to predict. It's a deep draw, from the top seed all the way down to number 8. I'm going to go with Red Hook over Marlboro in the final. It's a rematch of the Mahal semifinals. Marlboro led that game by as many as 17 points and won 67-65. Red Hook super shooter Joe Stortini averaging 24 points leads the way. But Section 9 fans, get ready for another dogfight. This is another potential two-point game. It's going to be tough. Anything goes in Class A, I'm going to stick with Red Hook. So good luck to everybody. Class B is a lock. Burke Catholic all the way. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it. If BC loses, it would be bigger than Buster Douglas over Mike Tyson. We will catch up with Burke in the state playoffs. Good luck, Eagles. In C, you have to look at dangerous teams like Fallsburg and Millbrook, but this will come down to a rematch of last year's final. Pine Plains beat Seward 46-45. Because of its height, Pine Plains' shortest player is 6-3 in its starting lineup. End depth, I'm going to go with Pine Plains. But like Marlboro did in the Mahal final, Seward's going to come at Pine Plains with Anthony Bailey leading the way. I'm still going to take Pine Plains in another tough game. And keep in mind, Seward hasn't lost since before Santa Claus stepped down your chimney. That was December 19th against Goshen. Another great game. In D, you have a rarity. Livingston Manor coach Charlie Hicks is pining for the Section 9 title. Usually coaches like to go low key. Why is he so excited about winning? Because Manor has never won a Section 9 title. Well, good for Charlie, and I'll tell you this, the drought is going to end. Manor is playing well and has plenty of experienced scoring options in swingman Mike Mills, forward Ken Fisk, and point guard Troy Carrera. Take Manor over five-time defending champion Coleman Catholic by six points. Coleman lost four starters from last year's Class D state runner-up team and still is dangerous. 
Okay, well that's it for the Section 9 Tournament Show. Check back on Varsity 845 throughout the tourney for game scores, breaking news, and features. You can also stay updated by following me on Twitter at JustinRod845. That's JustinRod845. Thanks for watching and enjoy the tournament. This is Justin Rodriguez signing off for Varsity 845.